Hello everybody, Scott Golden here with the Golden Opportunities Coaching and of course the Logic YouTube channels. Welcome to those of you who are new. Welcome back to those of you seasoned veterans of what we do around here. What we do around here is bring about conversations of a pro wrestling nature. We got nearly 2,400 of these um, or something like that um, across old school, new school, all points in between. We've Going back to the WCW thing, we've got Superstars Wrestling, we've got uh, Raw and, and all sorts of things. Anyway, uh, Raw isn't terribly bad. Brock Lesnar and Bobby Lashley start with the weigh-in. Adam Pearce and Corey Graves host the weigh-in. Lashley and MVP enter first. Heyman enters and introduces Lesnar. Uh, Le uh, Lashley wore athletic gear. Uh, Lesnar wins a... Uh, flannel coat and some jeans and a cowboy hat. Graves notes that Lesnar in the outfit might not be appropriate for the weigh-in. Lashley weighed in at 273 pounds. Um, um, MVP calls him the almighty killing machine and a god of men. MVP said Lashley gained weight after the title match, exact amount of weight of the championship belt. Um, and then Lashley uh, is done. Lesnar removes only the hat, um, and then he weighs 286 pounds. Les uh, Lashley said Lesnar acted like a fool because he knows he would lose on Saturday, and this would be the shortest title reign to date. Lashley said that this wasn't a prediction. It was a spoiler. Lesnar calls him a comedian. Lesnar imagined waking up on Sunday with the new champion, Bobby Who. Uh, Lesnar's music hit as soon as he leaves. The announcers wondered if Lesnar was um, ta taking Lashley seriously or not. Um, anyway, so we move to the first match of the show. They re After recapping Bianca Belair and uh, winning last year's Royal Rumble before winning the title. Can't believe that was only a year ago, and they botched Bel Air to this point. Um, the announcers run down the card for tonight. Um, then we go to uh, Bianca Bel Air defeating Queen Zelina, 346. Zelina counters uh, Bel Air multiple times. She keeps up with her and then uh, goes with sustained offense before going, but Bel Air manages... Grabbing her with a KOD for the pinfall win. Crowd liked Bel Air, but doesn't really care about the match. Uh, Kevin Patrick interviews Kevin Owens and asks him about uh, kind of foregoing whatever is going on with him. Um, I Certainly, it's a, it's a goofy kind of sort of uh, thing that they honestly, I can't imagine anyone really cares about, I guess, the Kevin Owens things people kind of care about because he's going into the championship match, but at the same time, Damian Priest is is handed his first pinfall loss by Owens, and yet no one really cares about that, do they? Um, anyway, so offering Patrick the accus accusation of... Um, then they go on about fighting. Let, win the last week means he earns a U.S. title shot and can keep fighting to win the title U.S. championship match. Kevin Owens defeats Damian Priest via DQ. Priest retains the title. Uh, finish uh, was weak. Crowds into the match overall. Owens tries to send on off the apron. Priest gets the knees up and then slams Owens into the apron. Leading to a break. Priest then counters... On offense and hits a headlock DDT for the near fall. Owens then responds with a tornado DDT and a frog splash for near fall. Crowd thought this was the finish. Priest counters and hits a pop-up powerbomb and a roundhouse kick for near fall. Priest is angry. He, he stomps on Owens, who's in the ropes. Um, and then uh, the referee disqualifies um, Owens for using illegal maneuvers. pre tape promo. Rhea Ripley, Dana Brooke, Liv Morgan, Tamina, Carmella, Nikki Ash, stating their intentions to win the Royal Rumble. Uh, Zelina also does one earlier. And why do they actually think that there's enough women in this company to do a Rumble that people care about? It's not last year. This isn't Bianca Belair and, well, hey. Anyway... 
Uh, they cut to the brink. Sonia Deville admonished Damien Priest for his actions, told him to get himself under control so he doesn't get disqualified more often. Six women tag team match 24 7 champion Dana Brooke, Rhea Ripley, and Liv Morgan defeats Tamina, Nikki Ash, and uh, Carmella. Not exactly sure that anyone cares about this either, in the sense of if you're only going to go 233, why even have the ladies get dressed? Ripley's dominant in the, Ripley is dominant in the match, works over Tamina. Everyone trades moves, 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 and Ripley taps out Carmella. Standing in Bird and Cloverleaf, Tamina is um, off balance. Going to the second hour, Alpha Academy Challenge. Chad Gable said that he'd be the first of the triad of events happening over the next few weeks. He, he figured the idea uh, that people in Ohio was too stupid to understand what he was talking about. They're not big on education, so he's going with the continuation of the education shtick he's been doing. Gable also announced that he and Otis were entering the Royal Rumble. Patrick introduces Randy Orton and Riddle, who received a big reaction. Um, anyway, uh, Spelling B Otis is up, and his word is Eggerental. He says definition, and then the whole Spelling B thing, uh, is just stupid. They kill time with this. Orton is next. His words is, is dumbbell. Um, and apparently that's, uh, you know, ultimately a thing. So Orton then, uh, after going back and forth with this segment for a while, Orton spells that right. Gable is angry. Orton then gets such an easy word, and Orton's partner is a dumbbell. Orton told him to shut up and challenge him to a match right now. Randy Orton with Riddle defeats Chad Gable, 13.55. Probably the best match of the show. Orton's in control after dropping Gable on the announcer's table, then knocks Otis off the apron. Gable hits the chop block, follows up with a moonsault for near fall, and then during the break, Gable drops Orton leg first on the announcer's table and works the ankle. Orton mounts a comeback in crowd chance RKO. Orton hits a backbreaker draping DDT. Orton sets up for the RKO. Riddle comes out, goes after Otis, who's about to hop on the apron. Uh, then that there's that. Orton then tries to punt Gable and counters into an ankle lock. Riddle attacks Otis with his uh, scooter, and Orton. Slips out above the ankle before kicking Gable into the buckle. Orton follows up with an RKO pinfall win. Crowd pops for the finish. After the match, Riddle said they could choose to be the next challenger because they won this week. Riddle announced the scooter race, which catches Orton off guard. Alexa Bliss segment. Bliss is back at the psychiatrist's office. Asked about why when she first met Lily. She said she was six years old. She went on... I don't want a story about Lily. She goes on so long. In fact, they abruptly cut away from her and moved on to the next segment. Uh, Vince McMahon, Austin Theory, McMahon's office. Theory said he'd win the Royal Rumble and ensured in McMahon he would grease the wheels for him, but McMahon shut him down. McMahon told him that basically he's not ready. He's going to fight AJ Styles tonight. Theory acted surprised he'd have to face such an individual and then we go out of the segment these vince and theory segments are good for theory in theory no pun intended but honestly not doing anything for him long term not to say that there isn't something that can be done with this but uh at the end of the day here's where you go um and you know told him to be sure to take a good post-match selfie so veer is still coming where he's coming from must be far away for it to take this long for him to get here. Um, then there's a 17-minute match with Styles against Austin Theory. Again, really good match. Uh, Styles is in full control. Theory drops him over the top rope. Styles uh, pushes Theory off the top rope, but Theory comes right back with a rolling drop kick, knocking Styles and to the outside. Styles tries to fight back. From the break, but Theory hits a backbreaker for near fall. Styles then fights back, hits a springboard inverted DDT. Styles continues with strikes and neckbreaker and sliding forearm for the win. Uh, Theory uh, responds with an elbow and a back suplex or attempted win. 
Uh, there he comes back with a back suplex for a near fall, followed by a rolling blockbuster for another near fall. Theory comes up with a superplex uh, attempt, but Styles slips out of that and follows with a uh, Pele kick overhead. Three counters, and then uh, leading to Styles applying the calf crusher, getting a rope break. Theory shoves Styles off the ropes and goes for the phenomenal forearm, tries making a cover, and then with the feet on the ropes, but the referee catches him. Go, um, Theory goes for the ATL attempt and hits a gets hit with a phenomenal forearm for the pinfall win. Uh, basic match. Um, Theory manages to keep up with Styles is the whole idea behind the match. Uh, Becky Lynch and Dewdrop interview announcers interview Lynch and Dewdrop. They're in separate locations. Uh, Jimmy Smith starts the question with Dewdrop, but Lynch stops him and, and interrupts. Lynch says that Dewdrop. Uh, should be thinking about giving her the biggest match of her, or uh, Lynch giving her the biggest match of her life. Lynch rambles on and finished Dewdrop admitted that she's uh, turned out because of hearing Lynch talk made her angry and then Lynch tells Dewdrop to know her place. Dewdrop takes off her mic and lets Lynch says she's been uh, uh, Lynch said she's been champion for three years. Dewdrop appears in Lynch's room and attacks her. They brawl briefly, and this is stupid. Sarah interviews Ray and Dominic Mysterio, asking Ray what it meant to be on the cover of the video game for 2K22, which had a advertisement earlier. Uh, Steve Austin, The Rock, and John Cena, and The Undertaker had been there before. Spoke about how much it meant and said it would mean even more to... Uh, even prouder to see Dominic be in the cra on the cover one day. Dominic said he would it'd be an honor after playing these games as a kid. He said he played I planned on winning the Rumble. Ray said he'd have to eliminate his dad to do that. Dominic acted as if that's no big deal. Ray laughed and uh, as if he wasn't serious. Uh, Ray and Dominic Mysterio defeat the Street Profits with a uh, eight, eight just after eight minutes. Dominic hits Dawkins with a suicide dive before Ford dumps Ray over the top rope. On Dominic Ford then wipes out uh, with a flip dive leading to a break about two minutes into the match Dawkins works over Dominic for a good bit of time Dominic hits him with a tornado DDT they each make tags and and Ray goes nuts uh, briefly until Ford cuts him off Ray drops Ford on the middle rope sets him up with the double six one nine but Dawkins pulls Dominic out of the ring Ray tries 619, Ford blocks it, Ray manages to apply a roll-up for the pinfall victory. Post-match, Dominic tries tossing Ray out of the ring, celebrating as a rumble preview. Doesn't happen. Dolph Ziggler and Robert Roode randomly appeared to toss Dawkins from the ring. Dawkins, Ford, and Ray and Dominic jumps back in the ring to get Ziggler and Roode. Um, then Kevin Patrick introduces us to his guest at this time, Seth Rollins. Uh, Rollins basically kills time, saying he's going to be there on SmackDown. Uh, then we go to the announcers running down the Royal Rumble card, which I'd forgotten half of. Maurice has a birthday party. Uh, Miz introduces Maurice. Security surrounds the ring. The ring is dressed with carpet and balloons and all that. Maurice opens her first gift, gift which is a framed photo of her, her husband. She said it felt even more special. Uh, Ms. got her the pink car. Ms. made sure to mention it's a Rolls Royce. Ms. pointed out to the security and informed him that we wouldn't be seeing Edge or Beth Phoenix. Uh, big gift and gold wrapping, unlike uh, pink and white wrapping for the rest of the gifts. They acted worried and Edge and Phoenix inside, but revealed that the box instead had a brick that Maurice used on Phoenix last week. They played Replay of what had happened there. Miz saying happy birthday till Edge and Phoenix enter to Edge's music. They are angry. Edge issues a warning before they both beat up security. Miz and Maurice bail out. Phoenix and Edge each speared security guards. They also hit a heart attack and the 3D before Edge power bombed a guard through a table. Edge and Phoenix, Miz and Maurice show ended. And that is how we go into the Royal Rumble. My God. Gosh, WWE is horrible. Anyway, we'll be back with more right after this.